as a young citizen of India, armed with technology, knowledge and love for my nation. With a vision of transforming India into a developed nation, I am joining Shobhith University. What about you? Very good morning to all the participants from India and abroad. So with the Institute of Engineering and Technology, Meerut, deemed to be university and it's a center of excellence, center for informatics development solutions and applications, and center for industry 4.0 technology studies and applications in association with African Asian Rural Development Organization, Ardo New Delhi, organized this weekly international webinar series on open source digital technologies towards self-reliant India. Atmanirbar Bharat, 8th January 2022. On behalf of the Honorable Chancellor, His Excellency, the Secretary General Ardo, and Hon Honorable Vice Chancellor, the faculty members of the University, and on my behalf, and as Professor Emeritus and Chairman of the Centers of Excellence, Center for Agricultural Informatics and E-Governance Research Studies, Center for Agricultural Agribusiness and Disaster Management Studies, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications, and Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Application, and Center for Health Informatics and Computing. Let me welcome our guest speaker of today's webinar, 50th edition of the webinar series. We're honorable, respected, most prestigious, Dr. Harish Handley. We welcome you for the today's webinar series. He is Namaste, the sir. Ramon Maxase Awardee in 2011 who brought prestige to India. And today we were, you know, you know, extremely very happy to host his talk in our international webinar series on open source digital technologies for self-reliant India. Atmanirvar Bharat. I wish to inform the participants and the guest speaker that under this international webinar series, these two centers of excellence, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications and Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Application have organized 57 lectures so far started during the COVID-19 pandemic period. Okay. Right. Open technologies to provision simple and economical IT infrastructure. A roadmap for students using free and open source software and reaching the goals of Atma Nirmar Bharat. Free and open source adoption business model. Open source software and industrial IOTs for SM MSMEs. Open data platform for smart digital government. Technology imperatives make in India for self-reliance. Edge artificial intelligence. Data governance for self-reliant India. Digital India transforming governance and society. India's email service, citizen at indiamail.com in 22 constitutionally recognized languages. Ecosystem architecture for digital transformation. Education system, cyber critical infrastructure. Seizing opportunities in open innovation and value creation network in the digital world for self-reliant economy. Ensuring food safety and compliance through technology. Digital India, urgent need for semiconductor manufacturing in India. Technology investment in agriculture value chain, role of foreign direct investments, entrepreneurship and skill development, AI design pathways, the rise of platform economy, revisiting value chain governance, era of automation, industrial robotics, and industry 4.0, Indo-German perspective of technology transfer, skill gap analysis and opportunities. Role of artificial intelligence in healthcare, current developments in diagnosis and vaccine research, digital agri tech and agri startup perspective, health informatics network value chain, e health system and beyond, leveraging emerging technologies for ensuring transparent 
and traceable agri and food supply chain. Unleash the power of citizen development for citizen enterprise software development, low code, no code platform. E-governance models towards sustained quality services to citizen backed up by technology. Indian MSMEs to adopt Industry 4.0 technology capabilities, urgent need for mentorship and accelerator program, building public digital platform using microservices and APIs, health informatics network value chain, early childhood development and learning, health informatics network value chain, a healthcare startup perspective, health informatics network value chain, clinical AI, interface between machine learning, and health informatics health informatics network value chain importance of social medicine and community health in the times of health emergency gravity filter a simple and low cost solution to drinking water treatment in rural india open source gov tech startups engineering growth empowering growth with automation digital transformation in small enterprises and small businesses of india challenges and opportunities national digital twin program need for a robust geospatial infrastructure industry 4.0 and msmes benefits of indigenously developed collab card software from national informatics center mass serialization and anti-counterfeiting solutions to fight illicit trade cyber security risks challenges and solutions intelligence approach to reduce the cyber risk New Internet IPv6 root server towards Atmanirbar connected Bharat, Indian startups, reflections, and possible policy interventions needed for scaling up to Gram Panchayat, blockchain and crypto for digital assets platform, pathways for global trade, robot as a service, leverage technology to solve enterprise challenges, space startups, connecting to international markets with the emerging business models. Enabling technologies for future vision. Vivekaranda Secondary Education and Skills Development Mega Project. Its potential impact on rural entrepreneurship and the rural economy in India. Sports Grail, a digital sports media platform and prospects of Indian sports industry sustainable model at a global level. Pharma 4.0, Industry 4.0 applications to Pharmaceutical manufacturing path to a digital transformation. Accelerate and scale non-linear growth through partner ecosystem. Technological renaissance and the human capital a perspective. Health informatics network value chain, medical outreach, challenges versus potential. Beyond COVID-19, revitalizing micro and small enterprises. Project management essential, launch pad for future CEOs and startup founders beyond society 5.0 a new society beyond industry 4.0 and post post covid 19 this was given by mr tomio isoge former managing director sharp india limited smart village oblique community and the african ict oblique iot lesson digital economy ways and means to protect and empower for self-reliance Pragmatic ways for Atmanirbar Bharat, Shri Satyanar and Banwarilal Tankyaj. Today is the 58th edition of this very important webinar series. We will have the talk by our guest speaker, Dr. Harish Hande, Ramon Maxase Awardee in 2011, co-founder and chairman, Solar Electric Light Company, a 1995 for-profit social enterprise, Bangalore, on the important topic democratization of essential services by using sustainable energy as a catalyst dear participants please note down the keyword democratization essential services sustainable energy using as a catalyst and atma nirbar bharat the road ahead this is a vision of our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi of making india a self reliance self reliant nation rested on five eyes intent inclusion investment infrastructure and innovation based on five pillars economy quantum jump infrastructure one that represents modern india 
system 21st century technology driven and vibrant demography and demand whereby the strength of our demand and the supply chain should be utilized to full capacity vocal for local to make it for global very important you know clarion call digital india program aims to transform india into a knowledge based economy and a digitalized empower society indian geospatial economy is on the verge of a transformational change driven by landmark guidelines for geospatial data and the drone rules by indian government to liberalize geospatial data acquisition simplify the compulsory certification and license process today the and the gati sakti plan will help raise the global profile of local manufacturers and help them compete with their counterparts worldwide it also raises possibilities of new future economic zone this is the you know the prime ministers kadi 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 sakti national master plan for multi modal connectivity it is connecting the silos digital world the price of the rise of platform economy and which is emerging and digital ecosystems are essential for digital transformation in the digital world and which are all the frontier technologies in the digital ecosystem in the planet they are cloud computing mobile phones iot platforms social media gps advanced human computer interaction authentication and intrusion detection 3d printing smart sensors augmented reality and the analysis of big data and advanced algorithm and user data collection 10 emerging technologies making an impact which came in a publication in 2020 they are artificial intelligence 5g serverless computing iot biometrics augmented reality virtual reality blockchain robotics natural language processing and quantum computing digital transformation it means building dig- public digital platform using microservices and apis what is the ecosystem which we have agriculture 4.0 industry 4.0 and society 5.0 we have to achieve it in india digital india 2015 make in india 2015 startup india 2015 skill india 2015 atma nirbhar bharat 2020 mission 2022 all these national programs have an operational problem at the level of small and marginal farmers at the grassroots level india has got about 14.5 crores operational holders out of which 85% of the operational holders are small and marginal farmers they are the food security to the nation on december 4th december 2021 we had the talk on society 5.0 a new society beyond industry 4.0 and post covid 19 democratization on 18th december 2021 mr chandra pillai talked about on smart village oblique community the african iot i was i i ict lesson he talked about the united nations you know <clears throat> initiative of great green wall project starting from senegal to ethiopia making green wall and this he says that how a smart village and community led by technology supported or data driven smart farming integrated and self sustainable ecosystem driven acropolitan enclave he is talking about not metropolitan enclave acropolitan enclave and integrated with both forward and backward farm extension services offers an integrated self sustainable economy service dependency education health care safety security and user engaging systems linked to the national and global economy and an agropolitan community oblique society <coughs> living in smart enclaves the foundation is smart farming which is a process of end to end data driven approach supported by pre harvest and post harvest 
and the proposed technologies and enablers are communication and networking middleware iot endpoints analytics open source open stone standards artificial intelligence machine learning and cloud and on january 1st 2022 shri banwari lal satyanarayan banwari lal thankyaji founder trustee innovative thought forum ahmedabad talked about pragmatic pragmatic ways for atmanirbhar bharat where he talks about that there are lot of articles out of which five articles which he quoted i would like to quote which are in the form of seeds for transformational enterprises that can be created one is utilization of waste lands enormous waste lands which need to be utilized in india ppp model for msmes we have got 63 million msmes in the country and they have to be digitalized enabled globalized bridging india's unorganized dairy farmers into main, mainstream fly ash as a resource material digital literacy for india and this is out of 75 articles he quoted five articles which are very important at the rural area and then also he gives the for increasing income of farmers he have given lot of suggestion boost to millets and medicinal plants boost to allied activities like dairy poultry fisheries and sericulture renewable energy based micro grids for rural enterprises renewable energy based micro grids for rural enterprises skilling for agriculture and allied activities digital literacy for enabling use of technology democrat democratization of essential services on 4th november 2021 shri krishna mishra a global ashoka fellow and a founder of founder and chairman of e kutir rural management services bhuvaneshwar talked about on democratizing the future of farming a global experience in the on national ongoing national webinar series on doubling farmers income by 2022 i thought that i should mention here because of the important topic which our maxsa award awardee is going to talk democratization of technology i would like to quote an article i technologist paula clark managing director technology consulting resources of accenture it they, in his article it says that it means placing the power of tech in everyone's hand placing the power of tech in everyone's hands technology drama, drama, democratization plays powerful capabilities with people in operations maintenance contract center and back office functions what technologies are being pushed out to the employees he quotes it is there are some de- defining features crucially the technology must be easily developed and require little or no specialized skills skills it is a, it is a key reason why robotic process automation is finding more and more across use more uses across businesses in all industries automatic repetitive tasks to free staff up for more value creating network rpa is not alone natural language processing point and click analytics business intelligent tools low code no code platform they're all being deployed to put the innovative power of technology into the hands of people democratization a necessary disruption in enterprise it is another thesis report by nirmalya rao chaudhry he he talks about there are three steps approach for seamless it democratization establish a firm technology foundation a firm technology foundation embrace and encourage adoption establish a strong governance and according to cartner democratization of technology focuses on four key areas application development data analytics design and knowledge and is often referred to as citizen access and there are some areas where that the application development in the coming years composable erp for a composable enterprise multi experience development platform means low code no code platform and micro app architecture headless software as a service 
self service integration platform and api economy learning from covid 19 going forward and techno democratization of technology is a must and this is a unique opportunity for the world to enhance efforts around the technology democratization so that we can collectively be prepared to take on future challenges we talk there are a lot of articles using fintech to democratize financial services which is necessary in india through the pradhan mantri jantan jantan yojana today we have got about 430 million accounts opened under the scheme as of august 18th 2021 there are data democratization has to be achieved and data plays because data plays a very crucial role in informing public policies and decision making we have in india essential services maintenance act in 1968 we also have essential services and critical infrastructure they are defense and national security banking and finance foods and grocery energy data and cloud space education research and innovation transport communication water and health they are all clubbed under critical infrastructure and rockefeller foundation which talks about expanding opportunities for renewable energy based mini grids in rural india they are according to their article in april 2015 solar mini grids can create jobs help reduce energy poverty and improve the electricity supply quality dr harish hande is an engineer and social entrepreneur working with under served communities he is the co-founder of selco whose interventions have impacted more than 8 lakhs poor poor household across seven six indian states and according to dr harris handley here here selco has been working to open energy access in india since 1994 this i took it from the published articles which are available in india internet and he said that we work on democratizing services like education and health using sustainable energy as a catalyst and this is this article under the title the path to the covid recovery is paved with renewable energy it has come in the website www.forbes.com dated 29th may 2020 sustainable energy sustainable energy is derived from resources that can maintain current operations without jeopardizing the energy needs or climate of future generation most popular sources of sustainable energy includes wind solar and hydropower and sustainable energy for all is an international organization that works in partnership with united nation private sector financial institution civil society philanthropies to drive faster action towards the achievement of sustainable development goal 7 which is access to affordable reliable sustainable and modern energy for all by 2030 in line with the paris agreement on climate and according to some universities you know the academic program then which i quote from johns hopkins university which says that a master degree in sustainable energy is the need of the hour. master degree in sustainable energy and you know it is also is needed in india and we have lot of passwords sustainable energy renewable energy green energy and clean energy it is defined as like this the renewable energy means unlimited source of power green energy means the green greatest environmental benefit clean energy means zero emissions but not always renewable and sustainable energy means energy production that can last for the foreseeable future with this background now let us turn to the address by our guest speaker, Dr. Harish Hande, Raman Maxase Awadi in 2011, co-founder and chairman, Solar Electric Light Company, a 1995 for-profit social enterprises, 
Bangalore on the topic democratization of essential service by using sustainable energy as a catalyst. This topic will motivate and galvanize the participants. Watching over telecast through Facebook.com, Sobit University India, or YouTube.com, Oblique Sobit University in or LinkedIn.com, Oblique Company, Oblique Sobit Dash University for motivating them to get inspired for undertaking democratizing of essential services by using sustainable energy as a catalyst at grassroots level, that is at 2.25 lakhs gram panchayat. Let me introduce our guest speaker to the audience, Mr. Ma Mr. Manish. Dr. Harish Hande is an Indian social entrepreneur who has founded Selco India in 1995 to eradicate poverty by promoting sustainable technologies in rural India. He was awarded with Ram, uh, Raman Matsase Award for 2011 for his pragmatic efforts to put solar power technology in the hands of the poor through his social enterprise, Selco India. He was born in Kantatu Kundarap, Kundapura Thaluk, Udupi district, and Karnataka, and raised in Rurkila, Orissa, India. He went to IIT Karakpur for his undergraduate studies in energy engineering and graduated in 1990 and then went to the United States of America to do his master's and later PhD in energy engineering at the University of Massachusetts Lowell. Awards conferred upon Dr. Harish Hande. Ashton Award, also known as the Green Oscars for Sustainable Energy in 2005 and for Outstanding Achievement in Energy Sector in 2007. Accenture Economic Development Award for 2005, Social Entrepreneur of the Year 2007 by Sachwap Foundation for Social Entrepreneurship and Nand and Jit Kemka Foundation. Elected for Ashoka Fellowship in 2008 for uplifting an under, un, underserved population by selling, servicing and financing clean energy that improves their quality of life. Chosen by the business today as one of the 21st, 21 young leaders of, for India's 21st century in 2008. Named as one of the 50 pioneers of change in India in June 2008 by India Today. The Raman Maxis Award in 2011. Karnataka Raj Utsav Prasasti in 2011 by the government of Karnataka. Doctorate of Human Letters from the Trustees of University of Massachusetts in 2013. Distinguished Alumnus Award from IIT Kharagpur in 2014. Dr. Harish Hande, we are very happy to have you in the international webinar series on open source digital technologies for self in India. On, to talk on the very important topic, democratization of essential services by using sustainable energy as a catalyst, which is, you know, this service is being organized in association with African Asian Rural Development Organization, which has got headquarters in India, which is a 33 member organization. And this, your talk will be, you know, will be made available to all the participants from these 33 member countries through ARDO. I invite you to deliver your talk. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for this uh, uh, the introduction and, and a wonderful overview of the work that uh, uh, that uh, Shobit uh, University has done. And plus your own um, your own uh, excellent over the years of decades of experience that we all inspire to um, one way or the other. So. so today's topic, as you mentioned, um, is yes, I mean, see, uh, I mean, just looking at COVID, what has happened in the last two years? While COVID is a trailer for a bigger crisis that is coming, the crisis of climate. And, and COVID has shown us in a, in a very small manner how it can actually affect the poor people of any country per se. So today we are in a sector or in, we are all living in a, some sort of a false bubble that poverty will just disappear. The growth of different company uh, countries will actually lead to reduction in poverty. 
but that's not inclusive if you look at in the last two years more than 300 to 400 million people around the world and 100 of them in india slipped into poverty because of covid the question is it's easy for all of us to stay at home and easy to say work from home today there's a lockdown in bangalore agreed we all need to do that but we also have to remove poverty because they ha cannot if you are working from home or listening to you listening to this webinar that means you are one of the few privileged in this country there are numerous street vendors numerous farmers cannot expect to work from home but unfortunately we have no other choice right and that is where i'm saying that if each one of us did a PhD. Yeah. People say, I went to IIT. Yes, I went to IIT. That's because 300 million Indians did not write the exam. If they had written that exam, I would not have gone into IIT, frankly speaking. So if all of us did a PhD on sugarcane, we will all be considered experts of sugarcane, while a farmer doing 40 years of sugarcane will never be called an expert because he or she does not have a PhD. So we have created this false notion of degrees and education. We confuse between education and learning. And so for us, sustainability is not about just energy. Sustainability is not just about living. Sustainability also is in the thinking process of the people. And today, when you look at poor, we confuse between intellectual poverty and financial poverty. The one of the greatest disasters that we, we believe that the poor people have no talent. We believe that the poor people cannot contribute in a, in a more... Con and we unfortunately use the language, he's my driver. That's a language of slavery. He's a person who has an ambition to grow. There's a person at every university guy who, who has a guards guy. He has a name. We treat him, treat them as just individuals who have come to serve us. And that's exactly why a country like India needs to reverse it. And that's when true development can actually happen. Today, what happens in Bangalore, for example, if I look at the number of immigrants who come in and, and watch the, um, if I look at uh, in the offices, I asked a person, what did he actually do? He said, I've come from Assam. One person came from Gulbarga. No, no, I was doing nothing. I said, well, that can't be true. I said, I was doing agriculture. Lack of water led to drought and which led to not able to feed my family. I came to Bangalore. And what is he doing? He's a guards guy. If he had a LinkedIn profile, let's let's jump. I could have written his LinkedIn profile as an expert rice grower. Just because he does not have an education from a university, he cannot be an expert. For generations, his family has been growing rice. So what has happened? By him coming from Tezpur, Assam to Bangalore, India has de-skilled a person. We have de-skilled. We have lost an important rice grower expert of the country who has left his rice growing skills to become a guard here. Same thing as a maid servant who was working. I'm sorry to call that. And what she was doing? She was a cotton expert in Gulbarga. Lack of water forced her to come to Bangalore. But just be, and had we created a LinkedIn profile in Canada, she would know the complete value chain of how to grow cotton that many of the academics wouldn't have known about it. But now, what is she serving coffee or cleaning tables, right? We have de-skilled her. Why are we not giving importance to the cotton grower expert, the rice growing expert, the millions of them, but we term them in the case of poverty as maid servants, drivers, guards, etc. They are all experts. Because of lack of opportunity that we have failed to convert. We have so many IITs. We have so many academic institutions in the country. Medical, engineering. Our opportunity to create solutions for the poor is more critical today than ever before. If India, India should become a superpower of solutions where Africa is five steps behind. Southeast Asia is two steps behind. India is a paradox between the rich and the, the developed and the underdeveloped. We have, we have solutions. We have problems. We are a microcosm of the world's problems. You follow about droughts. You look at uh, floods. 
you have earthquakes, you have um, uh, hills, you have forests, you have rivers. We are a microcosm of the world. That means any solution that we can do for the tribals in Odisha is applicable for the tribals of Tanzania. What we do in the upper parts of Assam is applicable to the Philippines. What we do in Karnataka is actually applicable in Brazil. We are the R&D for the world. We should be a superpower of solutions. And superpower of solutions where a young kid in Brazil should not say, I'm going to go to the United States for a PhD. Can I go to India to find a solution that will develop my country? A kid, a kid in Indonesia should say, this is the only country that will give me solutions how the poverty in Indonesia can be removed. We have that choice. And to the young, young friends of mine, don't just sit and complain that this does not happen. For every complaint that you do, find out five solutions. If you are coming from your house to the universities, if the road water is leaking, think about, not about whom should I complain? Oh, the government is not doing. It's very easy to complain. Easy. That's the easiest thing that you can do. Come up with five solutions that if you were the head of Bangalore or Agra or Nagpur, what would have been your solution to rectify that road and, 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 and come up with a clean water solution, right? You need to be, we should stop complaining and start creating solutions for the country. Now, for example, when people say, and every time we are, I mean, uh, Professor, when I had gone to Dominican Republic in 1990, I had met a, I had met a, a farmer, Martinez, from Dominican Republic. And he actually took me inside his house when I was doing a master's student. He switched on the light three times and switched off the light three times and said, do you know where this light comes from? He said, this is from solar. And do you know where I have learned it from? He said, I have learned it from India, the concept of decentralization. Don't you think Mahatma Gandhi taught us 10,000 miles away? The guy, but I have a complaint against you Indians, he said. He said, you guys have created brilliant engineers, doctors, developed America, developed Europe. But whenever I meet an Indian, he always complains. He never says that I shall be responsible for the solution. Oh, this person should have done it. The government should have done it. And that is corruption. We always tend to complain. I think that was one of the primary reasons that I said, boss, let's come, let's do something in India that will be a, a, a solution, a positive frame of mind. Today, for example, the, the, the government has created rules on the road. There are lane system. It is we who don't follow it. Let's not complain the government didn't do it. The government has to do that. What are we doing? The garbage is our garbage. Let's not. The if you were the head of Bangalore, or I'm telling to the youngsters, what solutions would you have come up with? Shouldn't you have created, make sure that the recycling was done at the home level, that we produce less garbage, rather than the complaining that the city is not cleaning the garbage? We have to take responsibility as citizens of this country. And to youngsters, you are in at a, such a wonderful time. And COVID has come to you at a wonderful time where a crisis has come very early in your life. So any other crisis that comes to you in the future, you should be able to handle it. And, and why coming back to today? For example, what has happened? The centralization of everything led to a lot of the poor suffering today. Had we created solar powered dental chair or a solar powered millet making machine or a solar powered cold storage in rural india the local villagers could have stored vegetables in the local area and sold within a radius of 25 50 kilometers and need not had to go for any other livelihoods during covid the decentralization leads to much democratization and better delivery of wealth it actually equalizes wealth it distributes wealth in a way that India truly becomes sustainable. So today what we are trying to do, uh, Professor Moni, is that we are trying to use solar energy as a catalyst. So can health be delivered in the most remotest part? We are saying that, okay, because of lack of energy, lack of technology, maternal delivery in rural India cannot happen. We challenge that. We are challenging that. Why can't rural techno, why can't India show that the, even the remotest person in the islands of Assam, in the... Uh, or in, in Kanyakumari, or in, in Jharkhand, or in Kashmir, or Gujarat, a lady will be able to deliver a baby without any hesitation in the 21st century. We can actually do that. It's shameful that one baby or one mother dies is a shame, not only for India, for the world as a humanity per se, that we should be able to give provide. India can be that showcase of creating 
high tech maternal delivery rooms in the remotest part of the india running on solar power and and creating services for the matter it could be it could also be that somebody wants to start a xerox or a printer in rural kalahandi where a poor person needs to go by bus to take a xerox of an aadhar card the xerox might be 10 rupees but the bus service is 100 rupees so effective xerox cost is 110 rupees a solar powered printer or a computer in a rural area run by an entrepreneur even if he charges 10 rupees the the villager is actually saving 180 rupees so i am telling the youngsters to think of many solution and, and and professor moni we had another one where we sometimes confuse solar panels and batteries and say that what is the end goal the end goal is education the end goal is health the end goal is livelihoods not solar panel how do you deliver people said solar power to people who earn less than 30 rupees a day for example what is the aspiration of a person who earns 30 rupees saying that my kid has to get educated better and i need 4 hours of better lighting in the night he or she is not asking you solar panels is saying that can i have 4 hours of lighting so what we basically did was we put solar panels on school on top of a school and we put light and small battery in the house where the battery was less than the weight of a lunch box when the kid um has to take the battery go to the school and plug it into the school station the mother says i don't care whether you study or not i want you to go to school because i need light at home what happens is not only you force the kid to go to school get educated you also had light at home see the question was and the solar panel becomes part of the educational infrastructure not a commodity at home and these are the solutions i'm telling you youngsters to come at innovate a a for example is a coal fired plant b is the uh, what we call is the transmission lines and c is your house a is the school b is the kid c is the house you can come up with various models of delivery for example right same thing we did to the siddhi community which is the african slaves who have brought in from from by the portuguese way back 130 to 140 years ago in rural karnataka many of them are living as if they were brought in yesterday and no light no electricity an average siddhi spends 140 rupees on a monthly basis on kerosene and candles and for charging a mobile phone another 40 rupees approximately 200 rupees of the total earnings of 2000 rupees that is nearly 10% which you and me don't actually spend 10% on energy so what we basically did was they are spending 140 rupees a month on uh, sorry 40 rupees uh, 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 on a daily basis uh, on a on a monthly ba- uh, so so sorry 200 rupees on a on a monthly basis on on energy 200 multiplied by 12 is 2500 rupees a year and in 5 years it's 12500 rupees a solar system costs 10000 rupees the issue is not about affordability the issue is can i get a loan and when you go to the bank they'll say there are so many poor people they will not be able to pay so what we did professor money is that for the first 30 families we put up a guarantee in the bank and then said that if they don't pay we will pay after 6 months we went and asked the bank how is the payment that they said the payment is fantastic i said that if you knew the 6 months ago would you have asked a guarantee from me no right is a issue of risk capital and when i went to the end user they said solar is great lighting is great but after 6 months i will take a loan for a sewing machine what she meant was i have become bankable the beauty of sustainable energy is that it has put people multiple rungs in the social ladder right it's not about just light it's about pushing people out of poverty creating safety nets for example today a simple covid pushed people back into safety net which many of us will not get into poverty because we have multiple layers of safety net which will which will prevent us of from getting in poverty and that is what we are trying to do using sustainable energy is that are we creating safety nets for the poor so that even if a crisis happens even if some sickness happens in the family even if the if the main uh, a main earning member of the family dies the family should not go into poverty and what happens when the earning member and the family goes into poverty they go into generational poverty it takes 10 more years to get out of poverty it it adds to the expense of a country like ours while a solution today is much cheaper than bringing so many people out back when they were 
into into poverty many many years ago so what we do professor mani is like we basically create an ecosystem approach of saying that if you want a solar powered is also like solar powered sewing machine it's very easy to take a photograph of a solar powered sewing machine the first question that we ask is instead of doing two shirts she does eight shirts great everybody claps and takes a photograph the question is where is the market to sell the other six shirts if she doesn't have the market to sell the other six shirts it's a just dead technology so when we look at solutions we need to look at an ecosystem approach and to my young engineering friends who we i mean i also come from the engineer but we always classically confuse between low cost and affordability a 10000 rupee sewing machine might be more expensive than a 20000 rupee sewing machine because a 20000 rupee sewing machine can actually lead to better production that she can actually pay the bank a 10000 might not lead to that much productive and it'll always be a technology debt so sometimes when we design products we confuse between low cost and affordability per se so so what we need to do professor in our country like ours education needs to be cross cutting we i don't want to hear i'm a mechanical engineer i mean i i'm an electrical engineer and mba in finance i am a solution provider do you think tomorrow when a street vendor who is selling tomatoes and suddenly tomatoes becomes expensive and she cannot um, buy it or sell it she is not going to sit at home saying that i am a tomato selling expert that's what i'm going to say her two her kids will starve she will go and sell potatoes the problem is as we get more educated we become less experts right we become less experts and less useful to society the question is we need to diversify our thinking process of education system where cross cutting needs to happen in our thinking when we develop and innovate rather than saying that i am specialized in x i am a solution provider i need to when i go to the rural areas i cannot come back and say i am a mechanical engineer i just saw how the sewing machine worked that's a waste of your time the poor person will say ha huh? you came as an expert no solutions you cannot tell i am sorry i am a mechanical engineer from iit karakpur i can do only this nobody will listen to you did you provide the solution at that point of time so to my young colleagues let's stop patting our back that i have got 90 out of 100 or 40 out of 60 or 60 out of 100 my question those marks have no meaning have you created a solution that has created an impact where x number of poor people get out of poverty that's your report card end of the day that's your report card so the question is and and when we are leading um when we have this opportunities to come up with different innovations let us take that and and let's not keep and this is the country to be in this is the country of innovation right now innovation is not about create applications on uh, I have created a software app the application is about there are 10 people who don't have clean drinking water i have innovated the way to do clean water drinking with this financial model that should be your goal the goal is how can i increase the productivity of chicken production in manipur how can i increase the methodology of better rice production in central jharkhand for less than 2 acre farmers so that they don't need to migrate how can i increase the flower production of of the small farmers in madurai so that and how can i increase the value of milk by creating more innovative products to process milk so a, a person who is owning two cows can also be profitable in selling milk i think those are innovations you turn around in this country you will see problems and what you should see that that means those are opportunities not problems those are opportunities oh man if this road is rectified using clean better technology sierra leone will copy from me tanzania will copy from me brazil will copy from me if i create a better rice production for less than 2 acre farm the tanzanian poor the kashmiri poor the manipuri poor will actually get benefited from my my innovation and innovation does not mean technology innovation itself innovation in technology financial models delivery mechanisms all that actually makes what we should be actually doing so to all my young colleagues this is a wonderful time time to actually reflect on how you turn your education to learning to actual implementation on the ground and if you're just graduating from any university 
I would say don't take up any job. Getting a job is the easiest thing. Don't take an unreserved train from Calcutta to Delhi. Learn what this country is. Unreserved from Calcutta to Chennai. Learn what this country is. Create after your graduation, it's a blank slate. You're no expert. It's a blank slate. I'll figure out in six to eight months how can I contribute? Where is my interest? Rather than jumping into I'm this program, I'm this vice president, I'm in the rat race. You can always do. That's the easiest thing anybody can do. But solving the problems of this country is complex. And that is where you should not escape your responsibility as a citizen of this country. Thank you, Professor Mani, for giving me this opportunity and time to speak. You're muted. You're mute, on mute, sir. Thank you very much. Very much. Yeah. Dr. Harris Handel. It's a very innovative, very impressive, and motivating speech to the not only for the youngsters from different parts of the country, and also you said it that how it is meaningful that the solution of India can make a real impact in the whole world. And uh, and as an IIT, you know, when I, and I would like to give an example. Today, I felt so happy. And IIT in Chennai, 76-78, and IIT in Karakpur, I think, 1994. Uh, OK, you have muted. Uh, you have muted. 1986 to 90. Sir. Yeah. 86 to 90. Yes, and uh, when I was, uh, when people used to say that, Professor Moni, you are a mathematics student and you are a computer science student, how you have taken interest in pushing digital technology and agriculture. You are making everybody to stand up. I told him that to talk about, as in first is that, as a boy who was born and brought up in rural area, it is my responsibility to bring technology back to rural area. I have got an opportunity when I was in NIC, when I was asked to shoulder the responsibility, uh, to shoulder the responsibility uh, for bringing technology to district in 512 districts. I have studied one state, that is Kerala state as a model state, and had 14 districts, Padayatra, and some districts I was received with the black flag. Today, Mr. Go Back Modi, he receives the slogan. In 1987-88, Go Back Modi. Yeah. But today you can see that I presented afterwards the report in five district electors conference, 28 sectoral database development program, and plus village level you know database development program. When that time technology is only fast space technology. Today you have AI and big data analytics, and you know and that is the vision we had it as an IATN given a when we were given the responsibility. I took interest and get trained myself and uh, worked like anything to bring the technology. And, uh, you know, and then people said, how do you take interest in agricultural sector? I told him that anybody who is born and brought up in rural area, their DNA is, is in agriculture and rural development. They have seen the poverty. They have lived in the poverty. They have walked for miles to attend schools. You know, for education, they know that where the problem lies. Given an opportunity, look for a solution. Today, your topic was fantastic. You have more, your motivational talk and that you have every opportunity. Why don't you, you know, provide solutions? You can see the center in many places. You know, one center, I put it, Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Application. Right, right. And, uh, you know, that it is an e-governance solutions with standards approach. Absolutely. Today, Absolutely. in e-governance in India, nobody builds up e-governance with the standards approach. When you build right. a building, it is a standards approach. Right. All engineering subjects based on a uh, standards right. approach. But in computer science and IT, is you take some programming language. And 
it has the standards, but standards are not being taught. Right. That's why right. we are not in a position to have an innovative, exactly. you know, products as a solution. As a solution, right. And that is an and important is area which I have been voicing. You also said it. We have IITs, we have NITs, engineering colleges. I have been voicing for quite some time. Right. Today, you know, I have, I have, I, I have become ten years younger than today after listening to your talk. I'm sixty-eight. Yes, today, I have become Thanks. fifty-eight. <laughs> and the thing is that we have got 750, 50, 15 districts, but we yes. have, we have, we have, we have 10,000 engineering colleges. Right. We have 1,500 universities. Every state has got one IIT, right. one AIMS, one Central University, one IAM, one Indian Institute of Information Technology and one National Institute of Technology, and every state has got their own states of excellence, you know, right. centers of excellence in a higher education, state level universities of national importance. Why we are not in a position to adopt one district, which is around the place of location of exactly. the institute, where exactly. it is located, work exactly. for 20, 30 years. Exactly. You have, student, you yeah. have uh, faculty members, they are all public funded, right. tax based exactly. money. Exactly. And then you have students coming from all right. strata. What is the problem? In, right. I used to ask, I used to ask right. what is the problem? What is the problem of this engineering of, uh, of this 10,000 engineering college to use agriculture as a use case? Exactly. Why do you generate people for uh, you know corporates of the Western countries? Exactly. And uh, you know, the and uh, 2008 we have seen is uh, you know it, it is the financial crisis that our, the, our people who have gone abroad in IT uh, jobs they were in the back benches. <laughs> no, if we would true, have developed true, true. products, products you yes. would have developed you algorithms. Have exactly. And India would have been the solution makers, Absolutely. and which we can do that. And uh, you know that's that's an area where today your talk was fantastic. That's the reason oh, why you. I put it Center for Informatics Development Solutions and Applications. Right. There is no point in development. It is no research and development. It is a developmental research. Right. We need we need to do research for for any bottleneck which is needed to get a solution, development solution. solutions. Exactly. Center for Industry 4.0 Technology Studies and Application. Industry 4.0 came technology came from German. So you understand, yeah. study. And apply it. And uh, I have, you know, consciously, and this university center for, you know, the Soviet Institute of Engineering Technology is the third generation, which runs oh, okay. the education okay. service. And they took, that is being an engineering and uh, technology institute, they made agriculture as a use case. They have a center for Very agricultural nice. informatics and e-governance studies, center for agribusiness and disaster management studies, of the okay. idea is to build up a digitally digitally enabled solution for each one commodity, agricultural commodity for every district, each district. Okay. Okay. And we have got 400 agriculture commodities. And, you know, in India, and, you know, has a 365 yeah. days sunlight, yeah. 65 days sunlight yeah. growth, exactly. food throughout the year. <laughs> and agriculture waste amounts to $12 billion per annum. Yeah. And... Uh, Many of the, you know, that, you know, because of the traceability problems. Please wait, that is a disconnection. Mm -hmm. Hello. Mr. Manish. Ah, okay. Sorry, disconnected. Ah, yeah. He will come. So this, this is a very important talk which Dr. Harish Handley has given today. And uh, let us wait for two minutes. Mm. I think he, uh, he, uh, let me contact him.
Dr. Harish Hande has talked about that why our educational institutions have to be the solution providers. And, uh, you know, he gave a lot of examples. And he gave a lot of examples how the boys and girls from rural areas from different parts of the country have, are coming to the city of Bangalore for a job opportunity. He quoted an example of Tejpur. It's a rice producing, you know, state districts in Assam. Lack of water. A boy come, comes from the rice producing family, comes to Bangalore and work as a security person. So he says, works as a security person. And if we are in a position to have people who have got vast experience in a particular field, because if they didn't have an education, you know, you know, opportunity, they cannot become experts in their field. And this has to be, you know, changed. We need innovative solutions, innovative solution providers. It's more important. That's why the university has set up five centers of excellence in the area of agriculture, small scale industries, and e-governance and health sector. It is very important. This will create, facilitate, you know, the rural economy to flourish in the, you know, in a, you know, in an equitable position that. And Dr. Harish Sunday also said it that, you know, the, it's the India can become a superpower of solutions. It is a land of opportunity. And, uh, but it is turning to be a lack of opportunity. And, you know, we have to have solutions for poor. You look at a problem, we pass it on to the government. It is the government's responsibility. It is the local body's responsibility. Why can't we try to solve it? And that's how, you know, he talked about his point. And, uh, you know, it is very important. He also talked about it that when he visited the American Republic country in Africa, he saw that the person who was using solar, you know, uh, power enabled uh, electricity in his house, he said that he learned it from India. He was impressed by the our Mahatma Gandhi's principle, self-contained village. And this is and you know this is a very good message. People from other parts of the world learn, you know, the innovative solutions from India, but our education system is not in a position to make students to provide innovative solutions. And this is a very important thing that and uh, that's why their institution is making as a solar, you know, energy as a catalyst for, you know, various developed essential activities, essential services. That's why today's topic is very important. And uh, it is, it's a, it, it is, it's a, it, it is, it's a, it's a title as democratization of essential services by using sustainable energy as a catalyst. Let me find out that whether he's joining. Can you, can you just uh, call him in this number?
sir you are muted sir you are on mute dr harish handey it talked about that to to see the importance to understand the problems that he advised to the youths you buy an unreserved ticket from calcutta and um, you know travel to chennai you buy an unreserved ticket from Ch calcutta and uh, travel to you know delhi you will understand the problem the nature of problems so this is is very important uh, you know uh, uh, topic which he talked about it and uh, you know democratization of essential services and uh, through solar you know you know using solar energy as a catalyst is very important and uh, you know and uh, you know we would like to request dr harish hande is a ramon maxase award uh, awardee in 2011 and we would like to request him to get associated with the soviet institute of engineering and technology to you know uh, work in the direction uh, and also what is needed for the rural areas because rural area has got a lot of problems. You be it agriculture, be it small scale industries, be it, you know, education systems. COVID-19 situation has made digital divide in a very big manner. And if digital India has to be successful, so many national level price scheme no schemes visionary approach atmanirvar bharat uh, it has to be successful at the rural area energy is more important sustainable energy is more important it has to be used as a catalyst to make you know you know uh, essential services available to the common public it is it is that's why the top uh, the title is democratization of essential services during my introduction, I also talked about that uh, various areas where people talk about it, that uh, democratization of technology, democratization of, uh, you know, the uh, 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 data democratization. It is in the, in the era of e-governance, data democratization is very important. It means that everybody has to, uh, has access to data and there are no gatekeeper, uh, keepers that create a bottleneck at the gateway to the India data. So, you know, that, you know, democratization means to, you know, you know, to bypass gatekeepers and, and those who create bottleneck. And we have, you know, you know, local, uh, you know, local bodies at the grassroots level, 2.25 lakh local bodies, whether they should be the gatekeeper or they should be the you know promoter you know that the you know the people live in rural india have to take a strong call on this and you know and uh, feature farming is democratizing the feature farming because it's a technology based farming 80% of the operational holders of the farming sector needs to have democratized technology it should be affordable it should be accessible it should be made available to the you know, small and marginal farmers. That's why the doubling farmers income by 2022 committee report in its volume 12B titled Digital Technology in Agriculture. I was the group leader for this volume 12B of the committee and which gives seven mission mode programs for total digitalization of the Indian agriculture systems. It needs large scale democratization of technology for the small farmers to to be the leaders in security food security in india and they also should be globalized with this i thank today's guest speaker raman maxase award winner 2011 dr harris handy for his innovative approach innovative solution and innovative talk and impressive talk, motivating talk to the participants of today's webinar, the democratization of essential services using <clears throat> solar energy as a catalyst. 
its solar power as a catalyst. And it's very important that we would like to have your association in the university to work as this as a startup, this as a, uh, you know, as a pathway for improving rural uh, economy. It means providing what Dr. Abdul Kalam said it, providing urban facilities in rural area. We should achieve Pura in a very effective manner. We have to have a self-contained village in a very effective manner. That's why the 58 topics which we covered by today are very much meaningful to make self-reliant India, Atmanubra Bharat in every aspect. With this, I close the webinar and uh, I thank all the participants who are participating from India and abroad for this international webinar series. I thank Honorable Chancellor, His Excellency, Secretary General Ardo, and the Vice, uh, Honorable Vice Chancellor and the faculty members and the participants of this webinar series. Uh, yeah. <clears throat> A very good day and with this we leave the studio and close the webinar thank you very much thank you